The Padres and Giants just play the series in Mexico City. So to celebrate that, I wanted to make a video of the top five players to come from Mexico. Hey everybody, thanks for joining me on my channel Brutus on Baseball. Like I said, today I wanted to celebrate baseball in Mexico. Mexico has a rich history in baseball. As every baseball fan could easily see in the World Baseball Classic in 2023, to celebrate all this, I wanted to go through the top five players to ever come out of Mexico. Now Mexico has the Mexican League, which has been around since about 1925. It was small to begin with, and then just like Major League Baseball, it expanded a lot in the 60s and 70s. Today, it consists of 14 teams, each of the North and South divisions. And there's a lot of great players that have come up through this system. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get right to the list. Number five is Joaquim Soria. Soria had a 14-year career, primarily as a closer, from 2007 to 2021 most notably for the Kansas City Royals, where he was a two-time All-Star in the late 2000s. He finished his career with 229 saves, a 3.11 ERA, a 137 ERA+, plus, and 18 war, which isn't too bad for a relief pitcher. He was most effective early in his career, including his best season in 2007, when he had 42 saves and a 270 ERA+. Plus. That is a phenomenal number for any pitcher out there. Early on in his career, he was known by the nickname The Executioner. but in 2011, he made a statement that he didn't want to be known by that nickname anymore due to the prevalent violence that was often associated with his home country of Mexico. Soria hung around for a long time. A lot of the teams that he played for we've probably forgotten about, but he was dominant early in his career, and that's why I put him number five on this list. Number four on the list is Colorado Rockies third baseman from the 1990s, Vinny Castilla. He started his career early on for the Braves, but then rose to prominence for the Rockies in the mid-1990s, where he was an all-star twice. He batted over 300 with 40-plus home runs in three straight years, from 1996 to 1998. The only problem, though, was that he was a prime example of his numbers being inflated by Coors Field. We often hear this about all sorts of players. Sometimes it's actually true, and sometimes it's really not. His career high in OPS Plus was 127 in 1998, when he hit 46 home runs with a 319 batting average. But his overall career OPS Plus was only 95, showing that he was actually a below average hitter. And that's why his basic numbers of batting average and home runs were actually inflated because of the area he played in and Coors Field effect as well. But despite all that, he still managed to finish with 320 career home runs, 1,105 RBIs, and about 19 war. Number three on the list is Roberto Avila. Known as Bobby, Avila was the first Mexican-born player to have success in the major leagues. He was a second baseman and a three-time all-star for the Cleveland Indians of the 1950s. He could hit, he could run, and he could field well. He was the first Mexican baseball player to win a batting title in the major leagues, hitting 341 with a 139 OPS plus in 1954, which were both career highs for him. He was primarily effective during his prime years between 1950 and 1955, when he had an OPS plus over 100 each of those seasons. But he didn't age all that well, and he only achieved an OPS plus over 100 one year after the age of 31. He finished his career with a 281 batting average, 87 home runs, a 104 OPS plus, and 28 war. After his retirement, he was instrumental in helping to grow the Mexican Baseball League, where he purchased a team in Veracruz and also acted as the president of the league for several years. For baseball fans in Mexico, Bobby Avila is one of the fathers of baseball in that country. Number two on the list is Milwaukee Brewers starting pitcher from the 1980s, Teddy Higuera. Higuera was an extremely effective starting pitcher for the Milwaukee Brewers, including a second place finish in the Rookie of the Year ballot in 1985 and another second place finish in the Cy Young Award voting in 1986, his second year, when he went 20 and 11 with a 2.79 ERA and a 156 ERA+. Plus. He was the first Mexican pitcher to win 20 games in one season in Major League Baseball. After several dominant seasons in the mid to late 1980s, including perhaps his best season in 1988 when he pitched to a 162 ERA+. Plus. But he tore his rotator cuff in 1991 and had surgery, missing the rest of 1991 and all of the 1992 season. And he was never the same after that. He pitched a bit in 93, 94, and he tried another comeback attempt in 1995, but he failed at that and retired at the end of the season. He had an incredibly short career, 
but a dominant one, finishing with a record of 94 and 64 with a 3.61 ERA, a 117 ERA plus, and a war of 30. And the number one player on my list of best Mexican players in the history of baseball, who could forget Fernando Mania as it swept through Los Angeles in 1981 as the 21-year-old Fernando Valenzuela took the National League by storm, dominating the league by winning the Rookie of the Year and the Cy Young Award in the same season. He was one of the best pitchers of the 1980s, a six-time All-Star for the Dodgers with three other top five Cy Young finishes outside the one he took home in 1981. The height of Fernando's career was from 1981 to about 1986, after which he missed a significant amount of time due to shoulder injuries and was much less effective when he did pitch. He was released by the Dodgers after the 1991 season, and he bounced around for a couple more years for several different teams after that, finishing with a record of 173 wins and 153 losses, a 3.54 ERA, a 104 ERA+, plus, and about 37 war. That 37 war ranks first for all Mexican players in the history of Major League Baseball. Now, the rise of Fernando Valenzuela was instrumental in developing the Latin fan base for the Los Angeles Dodgers. He's been inducted into a variety of Mexican and other Latino country museums, and he's been heavily involved in the Mexican Baseball League, as well as coaching the Mexican team in the World Baseball Classic ever since 2006. The Dodgers recently announced that Valenzuela would be inducted into the Dodgers Ring of Honor in August of 2023, where his number 34 would be officially retired by the team. Those are my top five Mexican players that ever played in Major League Baseball. This doesn't count young guys like Julio Urias and Alejandro Kirk, who haven't really made a dent in their careers long enough to be able to make this list, but they very well could based on the path that they're going down right now. To finish off this list, it's good to remember that not all players actually played in Major League Baseball. A man by the name of Hector Espino is a great example of that. He's often thought to be the best player in Mexico's history and is quite often referred to as the Mexican Babe Ruth. Espino burst onto the scene in 1962 with the Rookie of the Year and MVP honors for the Mexican League. He won the batting title in 1964 with a slash line of 371, 479, 741 as he set a new Mexican League record with 46 home runs. That performance in 1964 drew the attention of the St. Louis Cardinals, who signed him and put him in AAA to give him a shot to play. He performed extremely well with his first experience playing baseball in the United States, slashing 300, 388, 452 in 32 games, which earned him an invitation to spring training the following season in 1965 with the Cardinals. But before that spring training would come, Espino would decline the offer. He would go on to receive multiple offers from teams like the Mets, the Padres, and the Angels to come play for them in later years, but he declined every time. His reasons for not wanting to play in the United States in Major League Baseball are unknown, could have been due to homesickness, having to take care of his family, or having to do with the rampant racism that he had to endure in the 1960s, being a Mexican ball player in the United States and he just preferred to stay at home where he could play in the Mexican Baseball League and be appreciated for all of his efforts. Over his career in the Mexican Baseball League, he won 12 batting titles, six home run titles, and he was a six-time MVP. Even more impressive, he accomplished all of those numbers during what was considered the dead ball era in Mexico, as the offensive numbers in the league would increase rapidly after Espino's retirement. Now, the Mexican Baseball League played a lot shorter season, about 118 games per season when Espino played. But despite that, he still managed to finish his career with 484 home runs and 2,754 hits but historians say that his true total of home runs may be close to 800. He was a phenomenal hitter, and in this one chance to play against competition in the U.S., he was able to excel even at the AAA level as a young player. So it's great to remember him, and who knows, maybe he would be number one on this list, maybe he's further down, but we'll never know because he didn't take that opportunity to play Major League Baseball in the United States. So that is my full list honoring the best baseball players to come out of Mexico. Thanks for joining me. I hope you learned something new. Until next time, keep talking baseball, and we'll see you around.